Hello Pisces, welcome to your March 2023 astrology forecast. Now I know I'm a little bit late, I'm so sorry about that, but we haven't really quite hit the big stuff yet, so I think we're still okay. Now March is a month that we have been talking about, astrologers have been looking at for years and years prior, uh, because we know that this is the month where not only does Saturn switch signs, but Pluto switches signs as well. Also March, um, is that I'm sorry, uh, Mars is, is coming into cancer, which is his sign of fall. And he has been in Gemini for months and months now, um, about seven months. <clears throat> and he's coming out of this masculine sign, masculine air sign of Gemini and coming boom, straight into his fall position. So he is coming out of a powerful place, having done his retrograde here. And there was so much change and so much movement that Mars retrograde really initiated for a lot of people. And when he comes out, boom, cancer is going to want to take the next couple of months and really process what the heck just happened. It's like, going through this whirlwind or this tornado and then walking out over this walking outside after the storm is over and just assessing the situation. And I do think Pisces for you, because this Mars retrograde happened in your fourth house, there was so much in terms of shaking up your foundation. Now I think the fourth house is one of, if not the most important house. This is one of the, I mean, everything is rooted here. Everything grows from this place. This is kind of like the roots of the tree without strong roots. Everything else, the, the, the tree is very fragile. Your life becomes very fragile if your roots are not strong. And I think a lot of Pisces were thinking about where they were in life what they were doing, how they were making money, the relationships they were in, what was going on in private away from the whole world to see, and maybe realizing that some things were falling short because it's very hard to find stability with Gemini. Generally, you've got a Mercury ruled sign. Um, I'd say for the same thing for a Gemini rising that has Virgo down here as well. It's hard for that stability to be established when Mercury is ruling the fourth house anyway, but then to have Mars coming in and shaking everything up, it's even that much harder. Plus on, on top of it, you've had Saturn in the 12th house, which is completely unraveling your entire life as you know it. So I think Pisces life has just been really getting dissected a lot. Plus we've also had this Jupiter Chiron conjunction since the beginning of February, which was adding to the vulnerability of, of everything. And a lot of questions really coming up for Pisces and what is my life? Where am I going? What do I want to do with my life? How do I really want to earn money? What do I want in a relationship? What, like, what am I doing? You know, and maybe you haven't really found an answer to that. I don't think you were meant to find an answer uh, at that particular time because Mars was still stirring the pot so profusely. Um, actually, I'm kind of envisioning like a pot of spaghetti sauce, like if you're heating it up and it starts to like boil and splatter. I felt like there was just like a lot of splatter and it was kind of like, ugh, you know, it was, it was hard to approach it was hard to get close to it. It was hard to control it. It was like the only thing you can really do is turn down the heat or remove it from, from the heat, but you weren't able to do that because Mars was still in the fourth. And so when Mars comes into cancer, this is like you taking the pot off the heat. And this is when you can finally really start preparing your dish. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of people are going to feel grateful for Mars moving out of Gemini. And I think this will enable Pisces to really think more deeply and more fully about who it is they genuinely want to be. That is going to be accentuated by the fact that Saturn is coming into your sign. Now, the last time he was in Pisces was in the early 90s. So it's been a very long time since he's been here. Some of you were just little babies. Others of you, you can't even really remember what was going on in your life in the early 90s. Um, but it's, uh, it's certainly 
a time to remember. Um, you are going through this process of integrating your vision into your self-concept, which can feel like a fight sometimes. Like if your self-concept, your idealized self is someone who is financially wealthy, madly in love, a deep, profound spiritual connection with God. You have a beautiful home. You have a wonderful family and pets that you love and you're healthy and all these things, right? You have this whole all encompassing idea of what you want your life to be. Saturn comes in and says, well, if that's what you really want your life to be, then you need to start being that person. And he's going to call you on your order, right? You, you ordered it. Are you going to be able to handle it, handle it? And so slowly, but surely the good news is that Saturn does work slowly, slowly, but surely you are going to start to understand what I call the familiarization process, which is so critical for manifestation where Saturn is going to give you something to deal with and you have to rise to the occasion. And then he's going to give you something else. And then you rise again, another, and you rise again. And there is this constant rising that happens in order for us to become that person. And yes, they will be hard, not because the situations intrinsically are difficult, but because we have an inner fight going on that doesn't want to deal with something that we're being given. And so there's a much more internalized contradiction going on here. We have the opportunity, but our inner self is like, well, is that like, I've never been that person before. So I don't even know if I can handle it. I don't even know if I'm ready, but Saturn says you're ready. And I, I think Saturn is going to really treat you like a, like a coach. You know, I always say he's the coach, not the cheerleader. He comes in and he's going to tell you everything you're doing wrong. You're not going fast enough. Your form is all messed up. This sucks. You got to fix that. You want to focus on this. Try this new move. You got to do it like this here, wear this outfit instead. You know, he's kind of so critical, but it's because he wants you to win. It's not because he's trying to make your life hard. He's not trying to make your life harder. He wants you to win. And in order for you to win, you have to rise to the occasion. And this has to come from inside of you, Pisces. And if you don't want it, or you're afraid, or you don't feel ready, there's going to be a big disconnect and it's going to really create a lot of problems. It might be, you know, feelings of depression or sadness or, or whatever. Um, because you're like, I know I could be that person. I know I could do that, but I'm choosing to do this, which is the same as what I've always done instead. And so your inner self is just getting further and further and further away from that idealized self. And that's becomes problematic. So Pisces, you have to be re ready to really soldier up. And that begins like right now, <laughs> you have to be ready to soldier up. You have to be ready to, to, to like allow yourself to be put in the hard spots. Um, and the past two years with Saturn and Aquarius has truly been about letting go of that old self so you could rebuild a new one. Well, you're no longer in the letting go phase anymore, which maybe got weirdly comfortable. You're no longer in the letting go phase. You are now officially in the building phase. You're building now. And I actually do like Mars and Cancer for the concept of building a lot. Um, I, I, Mars and Cancer both really connected with real estate, um, <clears throat> real estate and homes. I think Mars is a little bit more structural, similar to Saturn. I honestly would like think of this as you're building a new house. And right now you are digging the foundation. 
And that's how you should approach your life. You are digging the foundation. It is ugly. It is messy. It's problematic. You got to get permits. You got to deal with the city. You got to deal with the HOAs. You got to deal with all the things, the utility companies, everything. It's messy and it's dirty and it's expensive and it sucks. But once you do it, you're going to be able to build a beautiful home. Do not expect it over the next two to three years to look like the finished product. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. But this is your time now to first, like this is your breaking ground moment. This is the, the shovel, the first shovel in the ground. You can think of it very ceremoniously. And you may even want to do a little like inviting Saturn into my life type of ceremony or something and genuinely the way that like a big real estate development will have some sort of breaking ground ceremony with the shovel in the ground, right? It's, it is somewhat ritualistic if you want to treat it that way. Um, because it kind of sets the clock and you can create a birth chart even of like, when you do that ceremony, you're kind of giving birth to the Saturn in Pisces energy and you can kind of run, uh, kind of run the clock with it. So It's a big deal for Pisces. I would say Pisces, you're certainly in the hot seat right now. I think Aquarius has been in the hot seat, continues to be. Capricorn is finally getting a break. They have been in the hot seat for years and now they're finally getting a break. So now Pisces, you're kind of up next on the docket. You also have Pluto coming into that 12th house. Now 12th house Pluto, first of all, Pluto creates intense desire and incredible fear. He's very contradictory in that way. The very thing that we want, we can also be terrified of. So you're going to have to learn how to really work with your fear over the next couple of years and understand that fear is supposed to be a motivator as opposed to something that is supposed to cripple you. I think culturally nowadays we are a little prone of like, oh, that doesn't feel good. That means we're not supposed to do it. Not necessarily. Something may not feel good because we're so far out of our comfort zone, which could ultimately be the absolute best for us. So you need to understand the role that fear plays in your life, the role that insecurities play in your life. And, um, and there's going to be a, uh, I don't know, a real release as soon as Pluto comes into Aquarius. Um, Capricorn is very, very, very karmic. Okay. Capricorn is, there's just, there's just a lot of like conservation and heaviness and protection and control. Aquarius isn't really like that. Aquarius is much more go beyond the limits. Let's try things we've never tried before. Let's experiment and your experimentation really is going to be more found in not necessarily building upon everything that you've known, but rather your experimentation is, well, what if I don't believe those things anymore? And I think, uh, Pisces is going to have a lot of lessons in terms of your beliefs over the next 20 years with Pluto coming into Aquarius. Um, the way you believe and the role that belief has in your life and how restricted a lot of your self beliefs actually have been. Pluto is going to want to make you believe like crazy. I believe I can. I believe it's possible. I believe we can do it. I believe we as a society can do it. And actually maybe Pisces might be some of the, the big front runners here because of this Pluto in the 12th some of the front runners in terms of creating an entirely new society. Now we're all in that together, but some people have to drive it. And I think the believers are usually the first people to initiate the movements. So you have to believe that things are possible in order for those things to be actualized. And in order to believe that those things are possible, you have to let go of the way it's always been done over here in Capricorn. Okay. Now we also have Venus coming into Taurus. Um, she's coming out of this conjunction. Thank goodness. Coming out of this conjunction with Chiron and Jupiter, which is also almost over. Thank goodness that Jupiter Chiron conjunction has been pretty pronounced ever since the beginning of February. 
so, you know, it's been like a lot of exposure, a lot of inner child work, a lot of healing, a lot of really pinpointing the problems and the issues of the things that prevent us from creating a better life. Now for you, this has a lot to do with your financial world, has a lot to do with your sense of self-worth and your relationship with material things. Also your relationships with your own individual skills and talents. And maybe you don't feel good enough or ready enough or whatever the case is. You don't feel or haven't felt like you really could do something. But I also know that Jupiter is like, just because I feel this insecurity doesn't mean I can't still do it. So it's been a very fine balancing act of like exposing the pain and the trauma, but still moving forward with it anyway, even though there might be a, you know, kind of a terrified quality. Like I'm so scared, but I'm going to do it. Like you're about to bungee jump off of a bridge or jump out of an airplane. It's like, I'm terrified and nervous and I'm about to like wet my pants, but I'm going to do it anyway. And you jump and you take off. And once you do, you start to realize you had nothing to be afraid of. And I think that once this conjunction releases after March 12th, once Jupiter comes to that other side of Chiron, um, we're going to start to feel like, oh my gosh, well, there was nothing for us to be afraid of. That was so ridiculous. I can't believe we like put a, a halt on it all this time. We could have been doing it all this time, but you know, it's not worth it to really look backwards for us right now. This is more about just like what comes next. And that's one thing I love about the Aquarian activation with Pluto here is that we are not looking backwards anymore. We, we can't, it's, it's not really that feasible under the Aquarian energy. Okay. This is about the future. This is about tomorrow. This is about what we can do today to support tomorrow. And that's it. Okay. Venus comes into Taurus. She immediately comes into this conjunction here with the North node. Now the North node has created a lot of, you know, frustration and stuff, but he's also redirected our destinies in some way, shape or form. And so when Venus comes into this conjunction, now I don't see that any particularly profound event is going to happen. This is not about something huge. We have enough going on with Mars, Saturn, and Pluto. So Venus is going to come and just kind of offer that little nudge, kind of elbowing you in the side of being like, Hey, Pisces, this is happening for you. Like this future is coming. This, this whatever is, is coming. Now you may have felt because this is in your house of communication specifically, or even travel, you know, you may have felt like that there's been some sort of, something's been stunted. North node can often create blockage. Okay. It can feel like we reach in that direction, but we still like can't quite grab on, but the desire still pulls us in that direction regardless. Now, chances are we're going to start to see the benefit of the North node in Taurus. The benefits of that aren't going to fully actualize until July when North node moves into Aries. Okay. We, we tend like there are certain planets, like I would say, uh, Saturn is definitely one of them. Pluto is one of them. Um, and the North node is one of them where while they're in that area of our life, it's just like, oh, it's so hard to, to see and grab onto. It's hard to like really have any sense of control there. But once they leave, that's when that channel really starts to open and all of the stuff that got blocked, it's like it was building up, building up, building up, building up. And it just sort of bleh, got all consolidated. And once that, well, North knows not a planet, it's a point, but once that point or planet leaves, that channel opens and all of this consolidated sort of clogged up stuff can finally start to run free again. And it can happen really, really, really fast. And so once Venus comes in, I think she's kind of preparatory for you here. And it's like, okay, Pisces, like you better get ready because once this North node leaves, 
There is going to be a lot of movement in your life. Things are going to be different. There's going to be a lot of change. Your communication is going to be better. You're connecting with other people in a more community level collaborations, working together with people. It's going to be so different. And, uh, she's just kind of preparing you. And, and I think as she comes back home into her own don domicile, right? Of course, she's the ruler of Taurus here. So she's very happy and very comfortable here. It's kind of like she's sitting down to dinner with the North node and even Uranus as well. And she, she's like, okay, I haven't been home in a really long time. I went to my, you know, my other residence over in Libra a while ago, but I haven't been home. I've been traveling. I've been away from home. So tell me how things are going. And the North node and Uranus are going to have to report to the Lord of Taurus, to the Lord of their domicile, right? They're going to have to report to Venus and really tell them, tell her everything that's been going on. And she's going to have to make certain decisions. It's going to be a while before those decisions can be executed upon, which is what I'm saying. Like in July, once that North node moves, that's when we're going to start to see the effects of the Taurus in, I'm sorry, the Venus in Taurus transit. So she's going to be like way over here preparing to retrograde over in Leo when we start to see things clear up in your third house. So again, a lot of collaborations, a lot of communications and a lot of movement and travel and learning new things. If you've been intending on learning something, chances are July, August, September is going to be the time when you're like, okay, I'm all in on this now. I'm officially going to commit. I'm officially going to do it now. And you're going to really speed up that whole process. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about is as Mercury comes closer and closer to the sun and Neptune this month, they're going to be building and building and building. And around the 15th and 16th, all right, we're going to see a Mercury, Sun, Neptune conjunction. All these planets are going to, um, actually, let me just animate this. We're going to go day by day here. It's going to take a little, oh, okay. So we're going to move. We got Mercury here. We got the Sun. You can kind of see all those planets coming together here. Boom. There we go. So we can see here's March 14th. So again, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th, we're going to have this whole situation going on. This is right around the time Venus prepares to come in and officially Jupiter is on the other side of Chiron. Thank goodness. Okay. So this is going to be a dissolute. Oh, Saturn has just come in here as well. This is going to be a disillusion of like, I think like this is like a, a really important moment for Pisces, specifically Pisces, also Virgo in opposition, um, because this is your openness and readiness to become something else. It's like, you know, you're not that same person anymore. You know, you're different. You know, the world is changing and you know that you want to capitalize on it as much as you possibly can. Some of you may want to run away and go live in the woods and that's fine. Like if that's your goal and that's how you see yourself, it's possible. Like, let's say you work in a corporate environment and you want nothing more than to go live in, you know, the middle of Canada and live in the woods and have this self-sustaining place. Fine. This is that moment when I think you feel there's like a, the, the energy that I'm getting is just like, a, it's like a sinking and that relationship to the corporate world. It just like, oh, it just falls further apart. Just here it is. Here's you. Here's the corporate place you work at. And then, ugh, and it's like a break that happens. So I'm using the corporation, the corporate world, your job as like a metaphor. You can place whatever you want in there. It could be your financial situation. It could be the fact that you've been single forever and you're finally ready to like be in a relationship, whatever the case is, but it's just, oh, you're breaking away with like this big shrug because it is so exhausting to remain attached 
to that thing. You just simply cannot do it anymore. And I think you're going to feel that you can't do it anymore because Saturn is now coming in and making demands. And I think he's going to start making demands fairly quickly on Pisces, on everybody, but especially on Pisces and Virgo. Um, also Gemini Sag as the squaring angles, but he's going to come in and make some pretty substantial demands for Pisces right out of the gate. And because those demands are actually demands that you want to meet, remember he's your coach. He's trying to get you to the Olympics. He's not trying to get you to fail. He wants you to go win that gold medal. But if you want to win that gold medal, you're going to have to deal with that harsh criticism that comes from that. And a lot of it's internal. You're going to have a lot of stuff being reflected back to you as well. Especially if you are in a relationship, you are going to receive a lot of information from your partner and it can feel antagonistic, but you need to realize that your partner is most likely trying to help you if they're a health, if it's healthy, uh, obviously if it's a toxic narcissistic codependent or whatever kind of relationship, probably that's not the best. You're probably going to want to get away from that actually. Um, but that feedback is going to be so important for Pisces and it's going to be what you want to hear. Nope, not at all. It's absolutely not going to be what you want to hear. It's not what you want to see. It's not what you want to know about yourself but it's what you need in order to push you out the door because this sun, Mercury, Neptune is really like, you don't belong where you are anymore. You don't belong in that world anymore. You have to start building your new world. And that separation is going to be slow as Saturn takes his sweet time between 23 and 26 in your sign. He's going to take his sweet time, but hit the clock. It begins right now. Okay. So it is a big month. It is a big deal. Um, obviously we're going to be having, um, some big world events most likely, but I think for now, I just want to keep it more on the individual scale. It, you know, it, it's definitely a month to document your process and what it is you're going through. So if you're a journaler, or if you like to keep little voice notes, recorders, whatever the case, that's probably a really good time to do that. Um, just to get it out of your body, get it out of your head so that you can process more fully. Now, remember Pisces is a Zodiac sign of hope. And even though Saturn can be harsh, there will always be an underlying theme of hope. This is all because you genuinely hope and are optimistic that something can be true for you. Okay. So that's really what's driving everything. All right. Big month, Pisces. You guys know, I love you. Have an amazing month and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.